Hello great people, welcome back to our channel. One of South East renowned sons who had been a, been a minister in Nigeria has clearly stated why Biafra agitation will not stop as he went further to open up on a lot of things that uh, is causing the agitation to get tougher by the day. In the same vein, a particular body comprising of South East and uh, the Middle Belt have taken out turns to call out President Muhammad Buhari over uh, the case of UGM in Anambra State and also in Southeast. We're going to let you know what they have to tell Buhari in the message that they sent out to him. But before we do all of that, if you're not subscribed to our channel, kindly hit on the red subscribe button and also on the bell icon so that you get notification anytime. We publish our videos. A former minister of power, Professor Chinedu Nebu, has revealed why the indigenous people of Biafra will continue to agitate for Biafra. Nebu stated that the marginalization and unfair treatment of the Ndibu in the country led to agitation for a separate nation spearheaded by IPOB leader Mazinam de Kanu. He noted that as long as the injustice done to Ndibus are not addressed, and the rights of the Igbos are also not given to them, IPOP will continue to agitate in the southeast. The former minister said these are the inauguration of new executive members of the corresponding chapter, Chapel, Nigerian Union of Journalists, Enugu State Council in Enugu on Saturday. Nebu added that IPOP agitation is justifiable, but the method by which the group is going about it demands was condemnable. According to his word, he says, the clamor for the state of Biafra was born out of the massive ill treatment of Ndibos, this enfranchisement of Ndibos, the unspeakable treatment of Ndibos that have driven many of our young people to despair and despondency. That is why IPOP was born. Unfortunately, these Methods are horrible, not defensible, unacceptable, and they are not passing on whatever it is they want to pass in the right way. So when you talk to a typical young person in Igbo land, they feel like there is no hope for them in the entity called Nigeria. And that is why some of them are so determined to the point of giving their lives to have independence and to become free from these shackles that Nigeria has placed on the Igbos. I have always believed in one strong viral country called Nigeria. Together we are stronger, we are better, we are more massive, and we can turn the lots of the country around, and in so doing, turn the course of the black man around. The dismemberment of Nigeria is not in the best interest of the black race. In order to prevent that dismemberment, Nibu must be given a pride of place again in this country. Hmm. And that pride of place must come from an Igbo man mounting the saddle of presidency in Nigeria. I think this is very important because if it does not happen, more and more people will become restive and it is becoming obvious. For instance, right now, one of the most neglected geopolitical zones in this country is the Southeast. If you think in terms of infrastructural development, it is like the federal government sometimes forget that there is a place called southeastern part of Nigeria with regards to the distribution of amenity and infrastructure. Meanwhile, in another development, the Southern and Middle Belt Alliance, Samba, has urged President Muhammad Buhari and all southeastern governors to, as a matter of urgency, identify and apprehend the sponsors of UGM in the region. The group, in its statement issued on Monday, signed by its spokesperson, Prince Rang Pam Jr., appealed to Buhari to take immediate steps to tackle the growing menace of violence in Anambra and the entire Southeast region. Samba, while commending the Nigerian Army proactive action against insecurity, as it plans to commence three security exercises nationwide could name Golden Dawn, Enduring Peace, and Steel Water, further advised the soldiers to conduct this exercise with restraint and respect the fundamental human right of citizens. 
In their statement, it read thus, Recent activities of the so-called UGM in a number of states and the southeast in the past few weeks call for concern among peace-loving Nigerians as the federal government has failed in its responsibility to protect lives and property of citizens. Scores of lives have been lost and government and private properties, what billions of Naira, have been destroyed. The right to life is fundamental and basic rights, and it's so entrenched in the 1999 Constitution of Nigeria as amended in Section 33, which clearly stated that every person has a right to life and no one shall be deprived intentionally of life, save in the execution of the sentence of the court in respect of a criminal offence of which he has been found guilty in Nigeria. Likewise, Section 14, Subsection 2b states that the welfare and security of the citizen shall be primary purpose of government. This government has failed in that duty and continue to fail until it fulfills its responsibility to all Nigerians. It's heartbreaking that recent happenings in a number of states and southeast at large has breached these rights. If the federal government cannot guarantee the security of lives of its people, which is on the exclusive list, it is well advised for the National Assembly to commend or to amend the Constitution and place internal security in the concurrent list to enable governors to become effective chief security officers in their respective states. We therefore direct call on directly call on President Muhammad Buhari to fish out the sponsors of the so-called UGM in the Southeast and bring them to justice without further ado. We further call on the federal government to urgently investigate the allegation that the current option in the criminal attack in a number of states has to do with the forthcoming number of state gubernatorial election on November 6, 2021. Wow. So much to talk about. And uh, first of all, I'd like to look at uh, some of the responses of Nigeria. And this one says, this is not the time for the federal government to bring in military into the southeastern part of Nigeria. It is time for dialogue. It is time to speak out to these boys who are wearing the faces of UGM. This is not the time to go hard on them. Another person here says, the situation on ground demands so much diplomacy on the part of the president. Nigerians are already tired of what is going on, and these things must be brought to a standstill. Another person here says, this is the product of going against the fundamental human right of Nigerians. Anytime you continually push people to the wall, this had all this sorry said this is always the resultant effect we must learn how to negotiate we must learn how to talk to people as if they are humans wow and uh, this, this um right now looking at the situation on ground and what um, professor chinedu uh, former minister of power had to say it it brings back different memories and those memories and uh, are memories of when these guys were begging and pleading uh, for to be helped and uh, to be given their own rightful place in Nigeria. Someone, uh, the man said something about infrastructural development, uh, and he's talking about uh, negotiation on the part of the federal government. But with the way things are going in the country, I think that that time has passed because from the what we have been hearing on the field out of journalism, uh, the only thing we hear is all what we want is Biafra. They are no more interested of reconciliation or anything. They are not even talking about marginalization. Their terminal point is Biafra. And I, I think at this point, the government needs to do something to see how they can touch the hearts of these guys and bring them back. Without that, I don't see the future being so bright for this country. We need to, if we must still stay together, then we need to condescend to a level where they will understand that their place has not been totally deleted from the history of Nigeria. I'd like to leave it.